Hello, I'm James Kuma. I'm Senior Vice President for Products at DDN. DDN is a company which for over 20 years has been building at scale storage and data management solutions for problems such as AI, HPC, and other large unstructured data problems. In this presentation, we're going to take you through three areas. One is just a little bit of history about the sheer scale of systems that DDN has been supporting with NVIDIA. Um, many, many super pods out there. We're going to take you through some of those examples. Then we're going to talk to our friends at Lambda Labs. Uh, they are in the process of deploying a large scale AI cloud using NVIDIA H100 GPUs, and they've chosen DDN to support the data behind that. And then thirdly, a little bit more of a technical deep dive into what exactly it is about DDN's software that allows AI systems to run faster on a more efficient hardware infrastructure. So firstly, and we'll show a link at the end of the presentation, DDN have been supporting Superpods for multiple years now, and we have rather comprehensive reference architectures about how to combine DDN storage systems with NVIDIA DGX systems for the most for the highest efficiencies. DDN are supporting the majority by far of NVIDIA superpods today. Um, and through that process, we've developed many optimizations and additional efficiencies in conjunction with NVIDIA and NVIDIA's customers. Throughout the years, we've deployed superpods for life sciences or financial services for national lab systems, as well as uh, for those organizations doing at scale NLP. We've won multiple awards. And as of today, we've shipped over two and a half exabytes of all flash NVMe storage into AI systems. And we're now supporting thousands of DGX systems worldwide. One of the first and most interesting and certainly most sort of effective for customers um, installations we've had is the NVIDIA Selene system. Deployed around initially around three years ago, it's been growing ever since, and now you can count over 4,500 A100 uh, GPUs behind that system, plus 13 petabytes of DDN all NVMe flash storage. This system has been working hard on behalf of NVIDIA customers to run the toughest challenges there is in AI. And through that process, NVIDIA has been working with DDN to create additional optimizations to improve the performance of those workloads and, and improve the overall throughput of those workloads given the infrastructure, which all relates back to better cost-effective systems, uh, lower power consumption per useful output, et cetera. As I said, we've also been deploying many, many super pods. Here's one example, Cambridge One deployed in the UK, the UK's largest uh, fastest supercomputer. It's a shared system and they've used DDN's multi-tenancy feature to enable multiple different organizations, commercial and academic, to deploy life sciences research on these GPUs. And after all this, uh, DGX1s, DGX2s, the A100 systems, we now have the H100. And that introduces even more challenges, much more powerful GPUs, much faster, um, execution of your AI frameworks, and that results in a bigger demand for data, more data streaming, more data reads, more data writes, and the whole problem becomes much more complex from the perspective of storage. And this gives you more reasons now to think of DDN when considering a data solution for AI. Now let's talk to our friends at Lambda Labs who, as I say, have been deploying an AI cloud using NVIDIA H100 GPUs. So, uh, David, tell us who you are and tell us a little bit about Lambda. Hi, yeah, I'm David Hall. I have a responsibility here at Lambda for our product portfolio. Um, Lambda is a seven-year-old company that is solely focused on bringing machine learning engineers, researchers, and data scientists optimized infrastructure solutions specifically for deep learning training. Our solutions can be consumed in our public cloud or in our customers' private clouds and come fully integrated 
and with full stack support. The two biggest problems that we see consistently are A, this type of solution requires a level of high performance computing that is atypical for IT departments. And so the first thing that we see is that IT generally has a difficult time wrapping their arms around the technical side of both designing and supporting the infrastructure required for large scale deep, um, deep learning training. The second thing that we see is that, you know, the, the folks that we work with that are the engineers and researchers, you know, they just want to do their work. They just want to do the modeling work and, and not spend a lot of time messing around with the infrastructure and the schedulers and the tools and getting all of the stacks right, et cetera. And so um, what, what we try to do is remove all of that noise and let the, the, the engineers and researchers kind of focus on primary job one. Amazing. So you're providing a, um, uh, a a turnkey cloud service so that organizations can just log in directly and start start producing, right? That's right. And and we can deploy that in our cloud very quickly, um, or we can deploy that uh, in our customers' data centers or in our co-locations if uh, they want to own the assets. So all of our systems are based on NVIDIA GPUs. We offer a variety of NVIDIA GPUs. And you know, starting here in just a few days, we will have the H100 available in both our cloud and in our servers. We also partner with NVIDIA and sell uh, NVIDIA's DGX systems uh, and their super pods. Um, and so regardless of where our customers are on the spectrum from price to ultra high performance, um, we can uh, have solutions that are custom designed just for their needs. I know that you've been looking and searching for a suitable storage solution to support that facility. And in the end, um, happily, you chose DDN. Tell us a bit about that process and why in the end you did choose DDN. Sure. So um, I, I'd worked with, I've worked with DDN for many years in past roles. I uh, was quite familiar with their simplicity, uh, just how to deploy it, how to engineer it. And um, also just wowed consistently by the performance. And as we looked at what we needed to be able to offer in these very large scale environments, so we're talking, you know, 30 to, you know, 500 uh, servers, thousands mm -hmm. of GPUs, uh, we needed a, a storage environment that we could trust, that could scale to that level, um, that we knew, you know, would always perform at the highest level for our uh, uh, our customers' workloads, and so we picked DDN uh, partially because of you know uh, our experience with them and in, in, in other parts of the industry, but uh, probably primarily because we we just trust that the mm -hmm. environment that you've built out at scale multiple times uh, for large customers, including Nvidia, will just work, and that's what we needed. Now let's take a look at DDN solutions. DDN deploys in public cloud as well as on-prem, but here we're gonna take a look at the software architecture and the hardware architecture of our infrastructure solutions. Here you see the 400X2, our second generation of all NVMe flash platforms. Inside this system is unequaled performance, an ability to deploy and manage very easily, genuinely limitless scaling beyond what others can do. A comprehensive set of enterprise features, including things like compression and snapshot, and complete data protection security. Um, lots of uh, features inside there to keep your data safe, um, both from things like bit rot um, and bit changes, um, but also in the terms of protecting your data against uh, malicious threats and keeping your data secure within your tenancy. So firstly, architecturally, what have we done with this system? Over the period of 10 years, we've been collapsing the infrastructure. 
Other systems use external switching and external JBODs because of their architecture. We've taken all the services we need within a storage system and virtualized them um, whilst not compromising on performance. So the whole stack is simplified in terms of both hardware and software, but we also keep those features you want to see, tiering, data management, um, things like hot pools and hot nodes, which we'll talk about later on in this presentation, encryption, all of these are virtualized into just a starting package of two rack units like you see here in this rack. These scale out, so we start with just this two rack units, which provides a namespace of hundreds of terabytes. And by adding more of these 400x2 systems, you just increase the size of that namespace. So users just see one huge pool, which is expandable to the largest sizes in the world in terms of our file system. And they can get very, very strong performance into that file system all the time, almost regardless of the sort of IO they're doing. So by simplifying this stack, we've reduced the component tree. What that means is reducing power consumption, the most performance for the minimum power, minimum data center footprint. But that's not really where the efficiencies really lie. Where it really is sitting is with the core architecture. And this is where DDN is genuinely very different in how it works with data to give you higher efficiencies. With DDN, we have an intelligent client that works with the application. And that, app, that client will be able to access the data across the storage infrastructure and know where the data is lying. So once an application wants to read some data, our intelligent client will go and access the data in parallel for many, many, many servers and go directly to where that data lies and pull it back to the client very low latency, very efficient. So what's the alternative? Well, other storage systems have to have a backend network. And that's because the client is not intelligent. It doesn't know where the data is. So it will have to go to a set of servers that are usually predetermined by the administrator. And though if those servers don't have the data, they have to go and access it. And that means backend data movements. The ultimate result for you is that you require more hardware, you're gonna consume more power, you're gonna get lower performance and you get higher latencies for those data retrievals. So this true parallel architecture means that we get the data, we read the data from where it resides. And that takes away a huge amount of complexity in terms of performance and in terms of scaling. And what does that result in? Well, here you see um, a set of results from NVIDIA themselves run on a large A100 system. And the graph shows on the right there, as you increase the number of DGX systems that are trying to access data, both through read activities and write activities, you'll see a linear scaling until you hit the threshold of the storage systems themselves. And here we've got 12 DDN A100, uh, A AI400X2s, and you can see that our throughput in gigabytes per second is heading towards one terabyte a second for reads. And we're just saturating at just over 750 gigabytes a second for writes. So the writes and reads are quite close. Um, we'll talk about why that's important in a bit more detail, but fundamentally it's about checkpointing. A key challenge today is not just reading data into NVIDIA GPUs in order to run machine learning inference or training um, problems. There's also, particularly in deep learning and particularly with large scale NLP requirement to checkpoint data quite regularly. That means taking the state of memory in the clients and the applications and pushing it down to storage. That keeps your data safe and it allows you much more flexibility in the NLP training process, especially as the number of parameters goes through tens of billions. We have great write performance, which can't be said for all. And that great write performance is really one of the reasons why NVIDIA chose DDN. We can both saturate the machine learning uh, part of the problem, but also handle those tough checkpoints. And we also scale extremely linearly. And that's back to our previous slide about our true parallel architecture. We really genuinely go much faster than NFS. That's because we have an intelligent client 
that retrieves data across multiple paths, across an RDMA network, fully supporting uh, NVIDIA's Mellanox InfiniBand systems. And because we've got an intelligent client, we can do better things with the data to push more IOPS, more throughput into those applications, and we can keep scaling. So on the one hand, each individual application runs faster on DDN. On the other hand, as you expand a system, get larger and larger, no need to worry. We're not going to incur some kind of protocol bottleneck through our architecture. And that all translates into real world impact. Here we see a joint solution with DDN and NVIDIA uh, running the Powerbricks solution. And here you see versus NFS, two times more results with DDN. So with this somatic uh, pipeline, we're going twice as fast. And that's because we're able to deliver more IOPS, more read bandwidth, and more write bandwidth into the storage environment. Let's have a little bit, much, little bit of a, a deeper look into NLP. Um, this has been gaining massive popularity across many, many different sectors and is becoming increasingly important to almost all organizations with data out there today. Here we're looking at a GPT-3 model uh, trained using over 100 DJX A100s and DDN shared storage. Now, this is now three years ago, 13 billion parameters. This kind of gives you an idea of the size of the model. But today, these models are 40 to 50 times larger. And of course, that isn't stopping in those uh, in how, how big those models are getting. When we read the data set, we can push over a terabyte a second from DDN storage into that AI environment. Um, but then, of course, there's this problem I mentioned before about checkpoints. Um, because it's such a large system, you're spanning many, many systems, there's a chance of hardware failure. And to overcome that, you want to save the state of that data so you don't lose all the history. And you can checkpoint very fast into these DDN environments. Also, you often want to checkpoint in order to be able to restart the model with some different parameters. If you see it's not, not converging correctly, you can stop it and restart it. And that checkpointing problem, that write problem for the data is critical to that. So there's a few areas of development that we've made in order to improve the efficiencies um, for NVIDIA applications. But it doesn't really stop there. All we've really talked about is the training process itself. But typically what happens if people are using storage with inferior protocols is they come across different kind of challenges. One is uh, they might see more failures because of the sheer amount of components required in other solutions. Individual jobs will run slower. They may see problems with write performance for ingesting large amounts of streams of data from microscopes or from the internet. Um, and ultimately, it means that they're going to have to create silos and then data scientists are going to get frustrated through access to data and lack of performance. What we do is have an optimized system which can cope with the end-to-end -end data lifecycle for AI. You can ingest extremely fast. That, I say that's the right performance problem, and we achieve writes very, very well. We can munge that data. So as soon as you ingest that data, you're going to do lots of metadata operations on it. You're going to create lots of small files. And that's also an extremely strong area for DDN's A3i solutions. And if you look carefully at the 10 node challenge in IO500, you'll see huge metadata performance comparatively uh, from DDN versus others. We also integrate well into your ecosystem. APIs for the storage to help you manage data and put it in the place where it's most cost-effective cost and most performant. And we have ancillary products like DDN Dataflow and plugins into NVIDIA's environment, which allows you to move data and tag data and manage infrastructure easier with A3i solutions. And then finally, when it comes to storing the data long-term, a big challenge can be how can I cost-effectively keep what could be petabytes or even tens, even hundreds of petabytes of data um, cost effectively. And we do that in two ways. One is with data reduction techniques combined with low cost NVMe flash. And the second is with a completely native integrated tiering solution with HDDs, but the ultimate in cost effective um, capacity. Using either of these techniques, we can provide the very best in cost effectiveness for large data volumes whilst keeping it live and online and fast. 
We've been working recently with NVIDIA on H100 systems. You'll see a lot of reference architecture material being published around this with great detail about how we integrate and how to size systems, how to design the networks and the resulting performance you get out of those solutions. Here we see some examples where we've divided the problem set into, let's say, light workloads, medium workloads, and, and heavy workloads. And judging on the sort of applications you're running, you can make a decision about where best and how best to deploy DDN. So I said to keep it short. Um, the DDN solution is a true parallel file system with multiple optimizations to help applications run faster individually and as they scale. We reduce the infrastructure needed to support your data and that results in power savings. The real power savings though, are because we reach across the network. Our intelligent client does good things with the data, which means applications will execute faster on DDN. And ultimately that's where the huge efficiencies come in. For a given set of GPUs, you can keep them more saturated with real AI production uh, versus other storage solutions. So deploy once with DDN and see the benefits for years and years afterwards. If you want to see more, you can come to DDN's website, ddn.com and look at our AI area, or you can go to NVIDIA and see the joint solutions with the NVIDIA DJX Superpods. And we've got multiple different reference architectures. And inside there, you'll see details, um, benchmarks at large scale uniquely with NVIDIA and DDN solutions. So I recommend you go and check those out. Thank you very much. Yeah.